you live with our National Action Network Saturday Action Rally on WLIB 1190 AM. And for the first time in the new year, 2016, I want you to get on your feet for the president and founder of the National Action Network, the Reverend Dr. Al Sharpton. next to you, tell them you love them. If it had to be with you another Saturday morning for you that are live at the House of Justice, 106 West 145th Street in the village of Harlem. And for you that are listening live on 1190 WLIB AM in New York, or you that are watching live stream from around the country at www nationalactionnetwork.net. We're happy to be with you the first Saturday of 2016. Give a big hand our presider, Tony Michael Hardy, and our musical director, Brother Bravon Neal. And certainly we're proud as we kick off the year by hearing uh, in the house from our new National Action Network New York City chapter, Youth Move President, 12 year old Jasani Jasani Mark. Give Jasani a big hand. All right, he's the new president of Youth Move chapter, and we're glad about it and, and kicked off the year with our young people, I think that it is important that we from generation to generation pass on what is going to be a continued struggle. I'm gonna talk about that more as we get into 2016. Let me begin though by also saying that we give our prayers and condolences to the family of Sister Natalie Cole. Yes. Natalie Cole, who passed on New Year's Eve night, and then, of course, uh, the family of Leonard Green. Uh, Leonard Green, a radio personality, lost his mother, and his mother will be funeralized uh, on Monday morning. Uh, many of us will be with him at Canaan on 116th Street, Monday morning at 10 o'clock, Reverend Thomas Johnson. Uh, let me also remind everybody tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, watch Politics Nation on MSNBC. I'm really going to deal with a lot of these issues of 2015 and then where we're going in 2016. So watch MSNBC 8 in the morning and, of course, watch uh, and then at 9, you can go right to you in New York, WBLS, and call in as we do Sunday morning with Reverend Al. We had a very tumultuous 2015. Yes. I went on watch night to 
Grace Baptist Church and uh, came in the new year with Reverend Richardson, our chairman. And as I sat in the church and thought about the highs and the lows of 2015, I thought about how many of us just go through New Year's and never stop and measure where we are and what we are and therefore knowing where to go forward. We had some real low moments in 15 from what happened in Baltimore to Gray to what happened in Charleston with, with Scott, Walter Scott all the way down to uh, the end of the year. But then we had probably the worst situation we've seen. When a man goes in a church during Bible study. I want y'all to stop thinking about this. All of this about back in the day. I've not seen anything more ruthless That's right. than to go into a house of worship during Bible study and take it upon yourself to say, I'm going to kill people that I know are studying about love and harmony. Right. and execute them in the house of God. A few weeks ago when I spoke at the Conference of National Black Churches in Charleston, Dr. Richardson chaired. One of the ladies that were in the audience, who's gonna be at our National Action Network Convention in April, was the one he looked at and said, I'm gonna let you live to tell what happened. One of the reasons that it's important that our history be passed on to generations like Jasani and, and Chris and others is a lot of what we don't talk about and don't explain will be missed. That's why Saturday rallies is important. What was the goal of this man? Right. He said, I want to start a race ride. That's what he said. Then he said, a race war. Right. He didn't just go shooting without a goal. Right. His goal was, I want to start a race war. Right. Well, let me ask you this. If his goal was to start a race war, right. then why did he go and shoot up a church? Right. Why didn't he go shoot up a rap concert? Why didn't he go shoot up a hip hop reunion? Why didn't he go shoot up a whole pool hall? He understood our history better than some of us do. Because he understood the fundamental bedrock of fighting for freedom started and was grounded in the black church. Yes, <laughs> Reason that becomes important, now he didn't just go to any church. He went to the church then Mark V.C. and them right. had planned the slave rebellion. Now, it's, it's real bad, yeah. Kirsten, John Ford, when your killers know your history better than you do. Yeah. Yeah. One, one of the most tragic things to me about 2015 is the attempt to manipulate our emotions to divide and disconnect our family and our history. Bad enough that others try to destroy our history. It's worse when they can use our children to act like because of their hurt and pain mm -hmm. that they're gonna do it for them. Gwen Carr, 
Eric Garner Mother and I was just talking about that in the back. Every family might have disagreements. That's right. That's right. Everybody. <laughs> you mad at grandma about something grandma don't even know nothing about. <laughs> you and your cousin, all that. Because human beings that are in the same space and time go ahead have differences. But you realize that you are intertwined and interconnected by blood. So sooner or later, the mature ones understand to not inflame the fight, but to keep going. Because some things you may be right, some things you may be wrong, but no matter what, you still will be friends. You can't change that. So you might as well deal with it, live with it, because that is who you gonna be. And when we get ready to bury you, that's who's gonna bury you. So you better figure it out. Because they're going to roll you down the aisle for the last time. Whether y'all got along or not, we're going to call. What they do when you get in a, an emergency? Who is the next of kin? Right. Not the next of your hangout buddy. Right. Not who is at the bar with you. Right. Who is your next of kin? Why? Because we assume your kin will do what's in your best interest or take your leftovers out of here if you didn't make it. Now, the disconnect in our community has been more deadly than anything. Because if you can disconnect people from what preceded them, you don't have to worry about what the what preceded them lasting and growing. And you ain't gonna have to worry about them developing. It cuts off both sides. The old need the young to grow and continue what the old has done. But the young need the old because if you're not connected to nothing, you can't grow without being rooted in something. You can't get fruits without roots. Fruit grow on branches that get their strength from roots in the ground. Now, this boy in Charleston understood that and he felt if I hit the core of the black community, the black church, that they would rebel violently and would give us then the impetus to come back violently to defend ourselves if we had a race war. That was his design. That's what he said. Now, a couple of things about that. One, I told you, he understood our history better than us. The other thing that you miss here is when a lot of us out here talking, people call me on the radio, man, we need to get armed. What he has said to you, they want a war. That's right. That's right. Some of us that act like it's being militant to talk violent, yes. that is exactly what they want. That's right. One of the things that we saw in Ferguson, when they rolled out all that military stuff, they are prepared for you to be violent. Nobody, you walking right into the trap. That's right. <laughs> you remember now, Ferguson ain't much bigger than from here to 20, 25th Street. Right. They rolled out tanks, had snipers on roofs, and all of that. So when this boy talking about a race war, they wanted to provoke that. So then you got to ask yourself now. People get in our meetings, our rallies, and provoke violence. Mm -hmm. Well, whose side are they really on? Come on, come on. People get in your meetings and rallies 
and try to pit young against the old. Well, whose side are they on? If their agenda is disconnect, and if their agenda is violence, have you ever thought about they working for those that are opposed to us? Because nothing about those agendas help us. That's right. I was telling a young guy the other day, I was coming out, God said to me, well, Mal, you know, I respect you, but we got different strategies. I said, let me ask you a question. What's your strategy? Well, we believe in disrupt. I said, okay. And after we disrupt, what are we going to do? Well, we figure that out. Okay. I said, well, I'm just confused. I got all that. I said, but I'm confused about what and where y'all disrupt. I'm with some of our young activists. I'm with Black Lives Matter, all of that. I support Black Lives Matter. I support the young folk in Chicago who's working with our people there, Reverend Hatchner. But y'all, he's the revolutionary something, something. I said, well, you know what confused me? He said, what? I said, y'all jump on black preachers. Y'all tap Reverend Jackson out there in Chicago. Y'all jump on Bernie Sanders and Hillary, some of y'all. But a hundred black preachers came on Fifth Avenue in Midtown Manhattan to meet with Donald Trump. Y'all didn't come down there and disrupt that. on Fifth Avenue in broad daylight. I ain't seen nobody say a word to one of them preachers. Now they had the right to meet with Trump. I didn't disagree with them, the right. I disagree with what they did. But you in the disrupt me business. So you can disrupt Jesse Jackson, but ain't got a word to say to preachers with Donald Trump. Who are you working for? So good to Trump, Trump come downstairs in the lobby and held a press conference. So either we are confused or being played with. Just like I was telling Minister Floyd this morning, they got this whole media debate going on about Commissioner former Commissioner Kelly and Brad, and they in the papers every day all uh, through the holiday arguing about whether the statistical data of crime going down is right or wrong. I keep telling y'all, if you go with the wrong premise, you had the wrong conclusion. Okay, Rabbi, what you mean? Well, about two months ago, Commissioner Kelly and I debated at the University of Florida in Gainesville. He ran that down to me. Oh, no, no, the crime hasn't gone down. Shootings have gone up since last year. That's why we need to stop the threats. And a lot of people, uh, uh, wait a minute. I said, first of all, let me take your data. If crime shootings went up since last year, Last year was under us taking down Stop and Friends. That still don't make your argument right. You act like you was in charge last year. Y'all been gone three years. So what you're saying is that immediately after we stopped Stop and Friends, crime went way down, which proved we didn't need Stop and Friends. But some of us rushed past the fact in the confusion. One of the things we got to be clear about in 2016 is you got to sit down and listen to what you are dealing with so you can operate properly. Everybody mad and angry are not expressing an agenda that helps us. That's why I ran that down. 
Anybody more angry with Obama and more angry with our other leaders like Rep. Jackson or NAACP, but are not angry with those running around with people like Trump, there's something wrong and perverted about that kind of politics. You only come to disrupt the righteous, but never confront the unrighteous. Now, it is history's lesson that everything that comes from generation to generation evolves from what preceded it. I want y'all to get this. Everybody that you have studied in history studied what preceded them. The whole world wasn't waiting on you. You show me a great woman or a great man, and I show you the great folk they study to emulate greatness. So when they trick you against your elders, they are tricking you against the treasures that you can absorb, which increases you rather than decrease you. Every great leader I know studied great leaders. Every great entertainer I know studied great entertainers. I sit for for hours with Michael talking about James Brown. James Brown would talk to me about those that he studied. I used to talk to Bishop Washington, he'd talk about his daddy. Reverend Jackson modeled after Dr. King. I modeled after J uh, Reverend Jackson. That does not belittle you, it enhances you. The Bible goes from one generation to the next, one prophet to the next. There is no disconnect, cause there's one truth. Is passed from one to the other, whether it be Christian or Muslim. Mr. Farrakhan preaches what was taught by Elijah Muhammad. He was mentored by Malcolm. You don't get nobody that just show up disconnected and all of a sudden they uh, become more in Jesus and everything out there. Let me let me give you this one, Minister Ford. Jesus, who we as Christians believe to be the Son of God, not only when we first met Jesus, Matthew 1, did we get the lineage all the way back to David, Jesus, who we believe to be God's Son, went to the river and had John the Baptist baptize him. Now you gotta ask yourself, wait a minute now. If Jesus was part of the Trinity, why did he even need to get baptized? Why do you need baptism if you are the Christ? Because he was showing by example that I didn't come to displace John the Baptist, I will submit to him. But now you come, Reverend. Bishop, Archbishop, Monsignor, whatever title you got. And you ain't gonna submit to nothing. But you gonna worship a Jesus that submitted to John. But you won't submit to those that were ahead of you. Cause your ego and your arrogance outrun your anointing. is confined, confined with the boundaries of the skin that holds your little wicked body together. Because you can't get past 
past you. God is bigger than you. Truth is bigger than you. We got a great organization. 25 years old this year. Yes, we have a great convention. But I learned. I learned growing up in Operation Breadbasket. I learned being mentored by Wyatt T. Walker and Reverend William Augustus Jones and Reverend Jesse Jackson. And I pass it on to people coming behind me. It didn't stop with me. And it ain't going to end with me. And what makes you great is to be connected with stuff greater than you. I spoke for the, the National Conference of Black, National, I mean the Conference of National Black Churches. In fact, y'all should go to the website, nationalactionnetwork.net, and they got some of the message on. I told them in the message, they have my message on video on our site. I told them in the message, there is a difference between being a celebrity and being a leader. And the temptation and distraction in this time is that we follow celebrities rather than leaders. Leaders are nurtured and trained toward achieving goals and progress. Celebrities are just flashing and known and build up their likes on Facebook or Instagram. Hello. Reality show culture. Reality TV culture. What have you having celebrities running for president that don't even know what policy is? It's the dumbing down of America. So you watch trashy TV. So you have a trash talking candidate for president. And you will end up with a trashy country. I can out trash talk. Watch out, Bill Clinton. Yeah, right. I'll bring up trash. Right. Well, how does that qualify you to be president? Yeah, right. <laughs> In the last week, last 10 days, we're going into 2016. The last 10 days of 2015, a grand jury came back and said that we will not indict in Sandra Bland. Before we get used to that, a grand jury come back and say, we will not indict in Cleveland on Tamir Rice. Right. Right. Before we get to that, police come in a house and kills a 55-year-old grandma in Chicago for opening the door and then kill a 19-year-old college student. Three in 10 days. And I'm reeling on that, and before I could get out of 2015, they put handcuffs on Bill Cosby. In 10 days. They end the year with all kind of bang, 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 bang on our psyche. And rather than our analyzing and dealing with the psychological damage and having a movement to deal with all of that. They got us reacting to each other. Yes. Or who is the biggest Negro on a Negro fantasy reality show? Yes. Oh. I told my daughter, Ashley, works with me on the radio side, so I said, in my life, 
I've learned that no matter how successful you get, you can't be more successful than the power of the system is to deal with you. Which is why you can't escape changing the system. Because if you don't, the system's going to change you. I'm talking about what I learned in my life. I ain't just talking about black history. I watched in my life James Brown, Michael Jackson, O.J. and Bill Cosby prep walked. I'm talking about my life. All of them, the wealthiest, most world-renowned blacks in the world, whether they guilty or not, they reduced them to prep walks. They been whites guilty, but they don't prep walk them like that. But there's some that find glory in reducing them. What is the first thing they try to do? to any of us that become known is to assassinate your character, make you a crook. Lady asked me, Grace Baptist, on the night, said, what are you most proud of? I said, 1986, I led the marches in Howard Beach. This year is 30 years later. For 30 years, They've tried to demonize me and make me a crook. I'm still here. I'm proud. I'm proud that no matter what they did, I wouldn't surrender and give in. Because I realized again, growing up, that it was bigger than me. They wasn't trying to make me a crook because they just didn't like Al Sharpton. They weren't trying to scandalize me. They wanted young black kids like Chris, like Jasani, to feel that Black leaders only did this because they got some little scheme going. They don't really care about y'all, it's a hustle. And the way to break their self-esteem is to make you look like this is some scam. Because if it's no scam, then that means you really shouldn't be stopped and frisked. And you really shouldn't be shot at and left to die like you're worthless. But if I can give you a motive, it not only destroys the credibility of the well-known person, it reduces the value of who they fighting for. So Sharp really doesn't care about God getting killed Howard Beach because the emphasis is, well, who cares about that? Got to be another angle. No, that's the angle. Because in your walked mentality, you can't believe we really care about each other. Because we ain't human no how. I got to have a motive to go to Staten Island of Eric Garner. Could be that I look at a tape and see a man, blood in my blood, flesh in my flesh, choke and couldn't speak up for himself. So I'm going to speak for him. I got to have some underhanded motive. Because if I can have a motive put on me, then I can reduce. Nobody really cares about Eric. No, we care about Eric because we care about ourselves. One of the things we gonna do, I'm having our national staff meeting on Monday. One of the things we gonna do, when I got the call from Cynthia Davis and talked to Gwen Carr, the night Eric Garner was killed, I was in Nevada on our voting rights tour. We getting ready for the next 65, 70 days 
to deal with the county in Chicago and in Cleveland and in West Palm, Florida. All three of them counties, the prosecutors are the ones that stop the cases. Mm -hmm. Chicago, McDonald Tate, Cleveland, Tamir Rice, West Palm Beach, the Jones case. All three of those prosecutors are up for election this March. All three of them. In 90 days, they're all up for election. We're going to organize voter education, voter registration, and voter turnout in those three counties. It won't matter how much hell we raised if those prosecutors don't face the voters at the polls in 90 days. That's first agenda in 16. Then we go to the National Convention in April and lay out the chart on how we're going to put the issues of criminal justice, yes. issues of policing, yes. issues of what is fair and not fair, dead center in this presidential campaign. Right. We've been fighting it longer and stronger That's than anybody out there, and I don't care what trash Trump want to talk, they're going to be talking about Eric Gardner and Michael Brown and to be a right. We are going to change the conversation in the presidential race to dealing with justice. That's where we go. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm glad so many of you here packed this morning. That's right. It will be a mission that will have pushback. That's right. There are going to be people fighting every step of the way. One of the things people don't realize, people that change systems and correct systems are dangerous. Watch some now. Man that went in, killed the nine people in Charleston, yeah. when the black church, he killed them. Right? Yeah. Well, we just yesterday celebrated Emancipation Day in many black churches. Emancipation Day came about because on September 22nd, 1862, Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. Let me walk you through the slow and I'll let you go. There was the war with the Confederate States and the Union. Aggravated, started, and exacerbated by the Northern Industrialists fighting the Southern Agrarian Aristocrats. It got to where Lincoln and the Union knew. In order to break the South, you had to one, take away their money, and take away their populace. The only way to do that is that you had to end their no-wage labor base, which was slaves. So he signed on September 22nd, 1862, the Emancipation Proclamation. The Emancipation Proclamation said, as of January 1st, 1863, all slaves in the states that are at war will be free. States at war. He said nothing about the states at war. States at war. And the reason he could do that by executive order right. is as a war statement from the commander in chief right. giving a war declaration. Y'all right. right. with me so far? Yeah. Yeah. Just like President Obama 
did some executive action. Emancipation Proclamation started as an executive action. Before it became Constitution, before you get to the 14th, 15th, 16th Amendment, started executive order from the President. Emancipation Proclamation. Now, why do we serve watch night service different than other denominations? I'm riding the other night to Grace Baptist. Watch night service is different for some than it is in our church. Because we were watching for something different. The Lutherans started in Germany. They celebrate the new year. We had watch night. Because for many times, we were promised that the slaves would be free. We finally, as of September 22nd, had a document promising us our freedom. And after bitter disappointment, after years of being shackled and chained and forced to work for no wages, Years of watching our daughters raped and our wives reduced to men. We stood by that night and waited for midnight. Because according to this document, at midnight we could walk off the plantation. on no ball to drop. We were waiting after hundreds of years of being treated like chattel that we can walk out of here. Same debate, Sister Shakur. What's going on then? It's going on now. Yet some slaves said, where are we going? At least we got meal here. At least we got a warm bed. Go where? Yet others, talking about I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You had others, talking about I don't care where we go. I don't know how I'm going to eat. All I want is to be free. I can figure the rest out. This infighting didn't stop now. Long as we've been here, we've been fighting. But we kept moving. Frederick Douglass and Gant didn't agree. But all of them wanted to be on that plantation. Booker T. Washington and Du Bois didn't agree. But they didn't get in each other's way. Angel Randolph and Du Bois and Garvey didn't agree. But they didn't get in each other's way. Malcolm and Dr. King didn't always agree. There's always been different views. But we always kept moving. Emancipation Day should remind us what New Year's meant to us. Let me, let me tell you something. The reason why I say that this is dangerous is because Lincoln, a lot of us miss this now, because Lincoln rearranged the system and freed slaves, a Confederate man actor blew his brains out. That's right. Who? Yeah. Booth wasn't no fanatic. He was an accomplished actor who believed in the Confederacy right. and went up in the balcony and killed the President of the United States. That's right. how serious they are about this. Martin Luther King mm -hmm. changed the social order of America took the blacks from the back of the bus, took them for public accommodation. Man 
men went to Memphis, there were folk more militant than King. Folk that had disrupted King's march. He didn't shoot them. He didn't shoot the Ungawa crowd. He laid in the cut and blew Dr. King's brains out. They know who is the danger. Those that rearrange systems. Come on. If you were so big and bad, why wasn't they shooting you? <laughs> One of the things I try to pass on to younger guys coming up in name, it's better than my experience. I grew up and I watched the ones with the loudest voices and the baddest talk. Didn't nobody bother them because they wasn't doing nothing. <laughs> they killed King. They didn't kill the militants I grew up with. They all died old men. <laughs> Natural causes. <laughs> on Medicare. I'm talking about the revolutionary against the government died on Medicare. <laughs> and had veterans funerals. <laughs> So why were they more at King? Same reason they were at Lincoln. Same reason they went to Mother Manuel Church. Because right. Right. those that really changed things are the ones you got to stop. That's right. Come on. Because they understand systems because that's how they control this economic inequality we're in. 74 unarmed black men were killed by police in 2015. Seven times more than unarmed whites. If you look at the data from 2010 to 2015, young black men were 27 times more likely to be killed by cops than young white men. What we talking about in terms of changing the jurisdictional threshold for federal crime is the way to change that. To disrupt that is to leave that in place. So we got to make shop and look like something else and we got to go after breaking up organizations and you don't need the NAA no more, you don't need this no more, you don't need that. We got to break this up. What we got to do in 16, as they decide on who's going to be president after Obama, is we got to make our people clear and on an agenda that is going to lead to real change. Why? Because if they put the wrong person in the White House, they go two to three more seats on the Supreme Court and affirmative action and voting rights and women's rights is gone. They talking about changing the system. You talking about changing reality shows. Yeah. They talking about law. You talking about drama. Yeah. They talking about history. You talking about your Facebook. They'll make decisions that your great grandchildren got to live by. That's it. You talk about you grow out of this phase in a minute or two. That's what the agenda for 16 is. That we got to get on course. That what Obama and all of us have achieved is not aborted and turned around. One of the great things that happened this year is when in March of this year, I live to see the President of the United States, a black man, walk across the very bridge in Selma, Alabama, that they beat us for trying to get the right to vote. Right. Early that morning, they walked over to where all of us was in the crowd and read off about 20 names and told us to follow them. And I followed them and I was told to stand right here 
at the foot of the bridge, just 20 of us. And we stood there. And the president came back out. He had already spoken. And he stood right in front of me. Next to me was the wheelchair with a million boykin on it. And I walked across that bridge. Y'all saw the pictures. Over the president's shoulder, holding on to Amelia Boykin's wheelchair. She had been tear gassed on that bridge 50 years ago that day. John Lewis was on the other side. The president had been beaten. The thought that they never, ever on that day, I'm talking about state troopers, Law enforcement people of Alabama never thought on that day we even had the right to vote. And now on that same bridge 50 years later, not only did we have the right to vote, but a black man was president. That was something they never dreamed of. And Ben Gavis, both of them who were killed fighting for that. I thought about my mother, who had died by then, and who grew up in Alabama. It was a day that was not supposed to ever happen. That's right. And they got some of the young folk acting like it was nothing. Because if they can make you feel it's nothing, you will not seek to do great things. Because every great thing that has happened before you, they've reduced in your mind to being meaning. They will tell our children, change of policing didn't mean nothing. It meant a whole lot to Eric Gardner. It meant a whole lot to Michael Brown. They minimize your worth. But what's worse when you co-sign your lack of value? Go into this year knowing that we are a great people rooted in greatness that was brought here shackled and devalued. And through it all, we rose anyhow. You brought us here as slaves. But look now, we had to save your economy. We had to turn around your broke country. The air of wealth and power broke the economy. And a young black man from a broken home had to save the United States. Don't look down on me. Wow. 
went to church New Year's Eve. Because yes. on this rock, yes. I built my church. Yes. And the gates yes. of hell yes. cannot prevail. Yes. That's how we got here this far. Yes. There was a God yes. that took us yes. and made miracles out of us. Yes. As you enter this year, I don't care what mistake you made. Yes. You've done some things wrong in your life. Yes, you might have had dope in your veins. You might have been to jail. You might have had family breakup. But look at you. You're a miracle. Through it all, it couldn't tear you down. You're a miracle. It couldn't stop you. You're a miracle. You're still here. Sixteen belongs to us. I declare. march of our people. I'm looking at a miracle. I'm looking at a miracle. I'm looking at a miracle. Everybody sing it. Everybody sing it. Saturday for you to join than to start the year off right as a signed member of the National Action Network. If you're here, just come down either aisle to me and let me sign you in to the membership of National Action Network. Come on. Everybody sing it. Hey. 